Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen whence you can safely close your peaky eyes. Eyes. And fall asleep. So, what do I normally say at the beginning? And bam, bam, bam. Well, I suppose I'd like to start by sending well wishes to my Australian friends and my Australian the people uh, that are listening in Australia or who f- have family loved ones in Australia um, during this difficult time with the the fires and stuff that's going on there so I wish you know hope I wish you all to be safe and I say that because I've got quite a few people from Australia that listen to me regularly. So that's kind of just for all of you. Because really, my chair, I've got to do something, I've got to do something about this squeaky chair. Really, Australia is a relative. You know, it's uh, like a brother, or it's a it's a sibling of England, as is kind of America. I class Ireland as well, but I know not everybody would sort of agree with that. But uh, but that's pretty more because my family. I've got a an Irish heritage. My grandmother, my grandmother's parents were Irish. So, you know, I kind of, we've got a bit, a big connection with Australia here, more so than, you know, maybe a lot of other countries, because it's got a big, mind you, big due to the multicultural uh, societies that we have, there's going to be people from every single country living in Australia somewhere so it affects everybody really at different levels of course but I just you know I wish you all well that's basically it I'm not going to spend the entire recording talking about um, that stuff but I just hope that you're all safe and it's really hard to personally to get a a perspective on that kind of situation because here in my country, I mean, it's not that we never have... um, natural disasters and natural you know uh, freaks of weather and stuff the extreme stuff happening but not on that level not on that um, or for that duration the thing that we have in this country probably more than anything apart from the occasional like bad weather Storms and stuff like that. We, there's a quite a few places that seem to have issues with flooding, like regularly, you know. Um, fortunately, I'm not in one of those parts of the country that has that. Although, although we do get flooding, because I live in the countryside, so basically. Th- I suppose like everywhere the houses 
are built in places where there shouldn't really be houses. This is where the rabbits live, you know? This is where the foxes lived and we decided to build here. I say we, but, you know, those people that lived before me. And... Whenever it rains, for... You know those times when it rains for like four, five, six days? Just it seems to be constantly raining. But when it does that, we get flooding in this area. But only like a, f a couple of roads. So, and there's two bits that are parallel to each other. There's the side road, which is where the countryside bit is, where all the fields are. And there's a permanent ditch with water in it which I guess was I don't know why they just don't just dig it deeper to get you know to have a bit more room so more water can be in it but there's a ditch I don't, there's a name for it isn't there you know the ditches that are next to fields so that the the field can still get water even when it's not raining so the water can still drain into it or soak into it. Is it... Is it slag? Not slag. Um, what do they call it? Oh, trout. <laughs> I generally can't think what the word is. Um, ditch. It's a ditch. Um... Not a slag heap, because that's... Isn't that coal, isn't it? Coal is the slag heap. The thing is, I didn't realise that, because when I used to go to Nottingham, and also went up to Manchester as well, it was outside of Manchester, and there was these almost look like little mountains beautiful you know I thought that's, and my friend an old friend I used to have he had at the bottom of his garden he had this almost like a little mountain I said that's beautiful he said that's the slag heap so that's a bit rude it's just this you know what I mean why you he said no that's the name of it basically it was just the um stuff from the mines I guess the, the whatever residue or something and yeah what was the word I'm trying to think of not damn it's so weird that so many of these names sound like they're swearing slag heap a dam dam and What's the other one? Um, ditch. I ditched her. I ditched him. It's like almost a. It's just a. It's just a hole in the ground, isn't it? What's? What is it? Um, trout. It's not a trout, is it? Um, ah, oh, the word will come to me. And so, yeah, parallel to that is where the park is. So there's houses on one side, and then oh, I'm no good with distances as far as like uh, what I don't know what 100 yards is. I really don't, but maybe 100 yards. So there's room for some houses and a big building. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, some houses and a park. So there's a park and in the middle where the there's a pavement, 
no, well, it's not a pavement. It's it's a pathway that goes through the park because it's a good way to get through the park. And walking on the grass is okay sometimes. So in the summer, when it's dry, but when it's a bit wet and a little bit damp, uh, a little bit it gets a little bit muddy, a little bit. Little bit swishy, swashy, gooey, you know. A little bit, and you know, I've only really got one pair of shoes that work, so I just have the. Um, I don't want to get them all covered in mud. Muddles from the puddles. I don't want that. But what happens every year, I say every year, I I can't, I don't know if it's every year that's ever existed. Um, but every year that I've lived here, that I can remember, the park gets flooded. But usually it's just on the grass, near the pavement. So the grass is uneven, it's like, Well, it's not flat, basically. But I don't notice it when it's not raining. It seems flat enough. But when it rains heavily, well, not heavily, it's, it rains and there's a lot of it. It seems to manoeuvre the, the ground to be almost a different... Uh, level to what it was previously before it had rained and therefore leaving puddles but big puddles you know ones that you couldn't walk through unless you chose to walk through them I mean you could walk through them but they would just I'm guessing probably go up to about your ankles in water so or maybe even up to couple of inches higher than your ankles I don't know because I've not tried it and I'm never going to not purposely anyway but this year or well, say this year last year actually because it's it was last year a couple of weeks ago or last week two weeks ago it rained so much that the puddles or the flooding on both sides of the grass overflowed onto the pavement and I couldn't get through there was no no boat service there was nothing I couldn't get through at all so I had to walk all the way around they added an extra five minutes to my journey I don't think I'll ever forget it I just couldn't believe the inconvenience Adding five minutes to my journey. That's when I decided this global warming needs to be addressed. Because, well, adding five minutes to my journey, you know? Absolutely couldn't believe it. Five minutes. And... Once though, I think it was three years ago, because I hadn't lived here long, and I I did have Andre, but I'm not sure if I had Andre with me, but I might have done, but I might not have done, it's hard to remember. But if I did have him with me, I would have been carrying him. Because the whole of the road, this is the other road that was parallel to the park. The whole of that road was, it was basically flooded. Like from the ditch, the dam, not the dam, 
not just what is it called? Uh, the dike. Isn't it a dike? Isn't it the the thing that's that goes um, next to the field that's full of water, and it's I think the water drains off of the field when it's really rainy, but it also soaks the the water. The field soaks the water into it when it's when it needs it. It's like permanently being watered and fed. So yes, yeah, so I think it's the dike overflowed. Because cool. if it wasn't for that, I don't. Well, I don't know. I suppose because it's a country road. So I'm surprised the water didn't soak into the field though. But it didn't. So it overflowed anyway. It does it every single year, probably a couple of times a year. Completely floods. This time, I didn't go a couple of weeks ago, didn't go around to look at it because I didn't want to. And, you know, you can't make me do stuff like that. I, I'm, I didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to go around there. I didn't see any point because I just go around and see, oh, I can't get around this way. I've got to walk back the way I came, which will add another, I don't know, minute and a half to my journey. And that, that's just unacceptable. So, but a few years ago, my friend he managed to walk through it and he found a way where the water just came up to you know he it didn't kind of cover his shoes so he didn't get wet so I tried to follow him but I managed to end up practically up to my knees and that is an exaggeration it wasn't up to my knees but the whole of my shoes went inside you know uh, the socks just and you know what happened there's all these people standing on their driveways that were slanted up so they were all dry and they said uh, why don't you come this way walk through our garden and I said so oh, thanks now you're offering me that a bit ungrateful really that sounds a bit ungrateful doesn't it but why? why didn't they offer it to me before I was completely soaked through I wasn't completely soaked through that's that is an exaggeration um yeah that is a little bit of a, a little well can you can you be a little bit exaggerated Yeah, you can, can't you? You could be a lot exaggerated. I don't know. So, I'm not sure. Yeah, I did mention it, but I shaved my head. That's proper. I'm a proper baldy. But I couldn't shave the back of my head because the razor thing that I was using was not working properly. I blunted it. I blunted it right out. You're beautiful. He kept, kept singing to me. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. And I was like, what's it doing? It just wouldn't cut through my hair anymore. And uh, I realised it was blunt. <laughs> oh dear. So, I phoned my friend today, or yesterday, whatever day it was. And he, he shaved the back of my head. It's really weird, isn't it? I've got a friend who shaves me. <laughs> 
it sounds weird when you say it like that, but all I wanted to do is to borrow his uh, clippers to shave, but he's, and he's, I said, like, nothing I can do is going to get through this. I don't mean get through the, it wasn't like a big emotional experience, so I'm never going to get through it. Well, not like that, but in a way of, the hair, my, my hair's too thick. I've got, it's almost sacrilege, I think, me shaving my hair off. When I got such a lovely head of hair. All thick and curly and black. Well, dark brown. Well, some of it. Well, three or three hairs that are black. No, I haven't. Dark brown. Well, I got clumps of hair, not on my head, but you know, on the floor once I'd been shaving my head. And honestly, it. I, I wasn't looking at it with admiration. Because I've never looked at a floor. Never looked at a floor with admiration, really. I've never looked at hair on the floor with admiration. Never looked at the mirror with admiration. Sometimes I scrub up okay. Sometimes I think the last time I thought, yeah, I look all right. But I did put some uh, effort in. Just heard some weird noises outside. Sound like a cat. But it actually sound like a cat going meow. But like a human going meow. But with a high pitched catty voice. Which don't seem right to me. For some reason. So it's Sunday. Don't know what the date is. It's in January. That's all I can tell you. Is it the fifth? So Wednesday was the first. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's the fifth. Fifth of January, two thousand and twenty. So we're nearly a week into the first year of the decade. Yeah. By the way, if you like to, and if you haven't already, perhaps you'd like to go to my website, click on the review in the menu, review page, and leave me a video review. Just uh, as if you haven't done it already. If you've already done it, then thank you. But if you haven't, and if you like what I do, then please leave a video review. Yes, that rhymes, doesn't it? If you like what I do, leave a video review. Wow. I'm ever so pleased with myself right now. If you like what I do, leave a video review. I think you have just experienced with me you've just experienced the the pinnacle of my life this is the highlight of the decade <laughs> the decade the decade already I can't, I don't think it could get any better. If you like what I do, leave a video review. Wow. And I almost feel like Bob Dylan. 
And by that I don't mean 90 year old 90 year old man I mean the 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 genius of the the rhyming I think one of my favourite songs of his is I think the lines he says is I gotta give myself a good talking to it's like brilliant what a great great sentence never realised what a great song like a Rolling Stone was like a Rolling Stone how does it feel how does it feel to be on your own with no direction home like a Rolling Stone a complete unknown I just I never realised what that song meant I never cared really but listening to the lyrics about someone like laughing at other people and thinking that they're better than them and that actually later on in life sort of uh, being like the person that they were laughing at kind of yeah it's a good old song that One of my what's one of my favourite Bob Bob Dylan songs was uh, it's not me, babe. Was it go away from my window, leave at your own chosen speed? I'm not the one you want, babe. I'm not the one you need. And then he goes and you want someone at each someone that opens each and every door. But it's not me, babe. No, no, no. It's not me, babe. It's not me you're looking for, babe. Of course, you couldn't do a song with the word babe in anymore. Because, well, two reasons. Firstly, it's not socially correct. Politically correct. And also, we say the word babe and we think of that pig from the movie, don't we? Babe. Babe the pig. Oh, this is a confession. I'm not sure if I ever actually watched that film. It's a bit like Stuart Little. I just... It... Because I'm not five years old. I just... I don't know, just... And these were films like years ago, weren't they? I would have loved them if they'd have been out when I was a kid. See, if Babe had been around in the early 80s or late 70s, I'd have loved it. Stuart Little, I'd have loved it. I'd have loved those films when I was like eight, six, whatever. And they're probably brilliant films to watch at any age. But I just haven't watched them. Unless I have, I'm not sure. I might have done. I suppose the part of the reason is because I never had any children, so I didn't go through that period of watching. Um, that kind of stuff as an adult sort of because I'm sure if I was yeah if I had if I had a, let's say I'm a bit old now for all that stuff but if I had like a a, a four year old son or three year old son I'd be watching Peppa Pig with him and I'd probably enjoy it more than he did. In fact, he'd probably be saying, Daddy, Daddy, can't we watch um, Pulp Fiction or something like that? No, no, Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. And he'd say, did you notice how I said Pulp Fiction? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's your reference, because you're so old, you're referencing the films from the 90s. 
rather than like an up-to-date film. That's rude. He said, yeah, five, I'm allowed to be rude. Oh. I can reference films. He said, well, it wasn't you reference, it's me referencing. But I'm referencing it because you're me. What? <laughs> you don't like it when I do this, do you? Because it confuses you if you're not sure who's talking. It doesn't matter. It matters to me, does it? Nah, not really. So yeah, I'd watch... Um, I used to actually... Oh, I've got an itchy leg. Oh, oh that's better. I... Um, when my little brother was born... Apart from ruining my birthday... Ruined my eighth birthday, he did. Because, you know, it's all about him. A little weird when babies are born. It's all about them, isn't it? What about my birthday? Because he was born the day before my eighth birthday. So those were the days when um, people that had just given birth were kept in hospital. You know, there was a time, it's hard to believe it, but there was a time when uh, a mother or you know soon to be mother should go to the hospital have the baby and even if all was perfect everything went perfectly um, they'd still stay in the maternity ward for maybe a couple of days so that the stitches could heal and you know, they could get back to sort of feeling okay. Because let's face it, as I've never had a baby. But, you know, I, I, I've, eat, I've had food poisoning. I had gastroenteritis. Mind you, I've had gastroenteritis is worse than giving birth. Because, you know, giving birth doesn't last for sort of nine days, does it? But it's <laughs> got no idea what I'm talking about. But there was a time when feet. I hope it's okay. I know it's, it might not be political correct to say when females give birth, but um, in the past it was mainly females that gave birth to babies and. Uh, you know, whatever, but they'd stay in hospital for a couple of days. And it was a beautiful thing. Because I think anyone that's been through that, they deserve a rest afterwards. You know, maybe not, maybe not sort of six or seven months off work, but Can you imagine? See, I'm. Can you imagine having a. I, I remember, yeah, years ago, I had this job and uh, I just started working there. And one of the people I was working with, uh, I think she just started at the same time as me, or she might have started after me, but she, you know, and she said to me quietly, she said, don't say anything but I'm pregnant and I said my god I, I only looked at you a couple of times how could you be pregnant she said no not by you I said oh good I said I, I know this I've heard of her weird situations and she said what are you talking about I was saying well you know immaculate constipation and she said what I said, you know, the Bible and stuff. She said, yeah, I think you got that wrong. I said, I think you've got it wrong. I don't think you're pregnant at all. She said, I am. I said, are you sure it's not just gas? She said, that's very rude. I said, no, but I get gas and I'm fat. 
And she said, well, I'm not fat. I said, I'm not, I'm not saying you're fat. I'm just saying that I get bloated tummy when I get gas. And she said, name the last time that you kept gas inside your stomach. I said, what do you mean? She said, you're constantly farting. There's no gas in your tummy. You release it at every opportunity. I said, this conversation's not going the direction that I thought it would. She said, well, how did you think it was going to go? Well, when you st start telling me that I'm the father of your child, I didn't thought you'd start talking about farting and stuff. She said, you're not the father of my child. I said, are you cheated on me? She said, no, we're not together. I said, oh, yeah, I forgot. And she said, uh, don't tell anyone, but I'm pregnant. I said, well, who am I going to tell? What do you think I'm going to do? Go home and phone all my friends and family? Oh, some strange person from work's pregnant. You know, what do you think? We're going to have a like, secret party for you, even though none of us know who you are. She says, you know who I am. I said, yeah, but you know what I mean. They don't. She said, what are you talking about? I said, well, why am I going to tell other people about you and your personal stuff when they don't know who you are? She said, uh, I don't know, really. I've not given it that much thought. I said, yeah. See, it just shows, doesn't it? What? What shows? Exactly. So, you're pregnant. What's the big deal? I mean, I don't mean a about being pregnant because of course it's a big deal you know for those that are pregnant but I mean why why are you telling me not to um, <sighs> tell other people she said well I'm glad you realise it's a big deal because it is I said yeah no I said that I realise that but not to me it isn't I don't mean that rudely but you know doesn't make any difference to my life she said well it does sound a bit rude the way you say it I said I don't mean it rudely I'm just it's it's your life it's not you know I've I don't tell you about my my medical um, I don't tell you about things that are wrong with me she said being pregnant is not an illness I said okay I know, I'm sorry I can't, I can't say anything right can I I don't know if this relationship's going to work. We're not in a relationship. Where'd you get pregnant then? <coughs> oh, we're going around in circles, Jason, aren't we? I said, oh, yeah, I know. Perhaps we should get off the roundabout. So we did. And she said, don't tell anybody that I'm pregnant because I've just started working here and I'm going to be taking maternity leave. But they they wouldn't have employed me if they knew I was pregnant. So I didn't tell them. So that I can get lots of time off work when I've had the baby. So I said, oh, okay then. But. If you turn up for a job and you're seven months pregnant. The employer can't legally, not in this country, um, they can't legally tell you that we're not going to employ you because you're pregnant because we're going to spend a month training you and then you're going to be off for the next 10 months or a year and we have to pay you for that time. And you might not come back because you have a choice. You might not come back, so we'll pay you for a year and you may not return. So we're not going to employ you because that's against the law. They're not allowed to do that. However, they won't employ you. <laughs> so these laws don't mean anything, really. Because if an employer doesn't want to employ someone, so if I turn up for a job 
and the place is full of young people, which most most jobs are full of younger people than me, um, apart from those that aren't. And so let's say call centre, that's, that's where I've got my most experience now. Um, do I sound more growly, don't I? Mm, yeah. Very growly. So, if I turn up for a job and they're expecting, they want someone in their twenties, and I turn up and even on my best day, I don't, I don't look in my twenties. I probably look like maybe thirty-one. I don't know. I think I don't think I look my age, but it's hard to tell because I also don't think that anybody looks my age. If that makes sense, I don't. I look at people, and it's also it's almost like my eyes have grown older with me. What well, they have, haven't they? I suppose. So I think that's the benefit of uh, so that our eyesight is supposed to deteriorate, isn't it? It sort of makes sense that we we don't see other people aging because our eyesight is kind of gently sort of become a little bit less sharp as it was before and that's got to be a good thing really I imagine in some ways I remember when my nan had uh, I don't know what she had done she had laser she had her eyes lasered she was just fascinated by by um, Star Wars, and she thought, "I got a laser in my eye." So she had her eyes lasered because she was, yeah, you know, uh, visual issues. And she said, and she was probably, she's got to be in her eighties at the time. And she said, she couldn't believe when she first looked in the mirror how old she looked she didn't realise how old she looked and I said to her what did you expect to see you in your 80s I didn't say I didn't say that but she was just shocked because she'd be looking in the mirror every day you know just like anyone else does brushing her hair cleaning her teeth uh, practising um, a few of her little like miming routines and a few card tricks and a bit of magic close up she liked distant magic but I kept saying to her when people are really a long way away they can't see what's on the front of the cards she said yeah but I like distant magic I don't like close up I said, yeah, but you can't really do card tricks from a distance. You know, it doesn't really work. She said, what do you know about it? I said, just, I said, don't, leave it. Don't wind me up today. I'm not in the mood. She said, who are you talking to? Talk to me like that again. And I'll knock you out. <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> She didn't say that. And, um, I'll knock you out. <laughs> so she had her eyes done and she's like, oh, I can't believe how old I look. And I said, you look the same as you always have, which is true. And she's, she always looked the same to me. Even from 
like a little kid to being in before forties. But I think it's the same as with anyone, isn't it? People, I look at people now and I don't see them as being in their fifties. And now I don't, you know, it's almost like my my brain is adapted to the aging process. So that younger people look really young, some of them, when actually they're probably like 19, 20. And you say, well, they are young, but yeah, they are, but they're adults. But they still kind of just look really young sometimes. And even people in their 20s, 30s, they just don't look. There was, a, there was a time when they were old. You know, when I was a kid, I'd look at someone in their 30s. When I was 20, someone in their 30s, that's, that's old, man. Someone in their 40s, someone 49, like me, that'd be like almost pensioner, a pensioner age. That's just like, wow. How have you survived so long? 49? So yeah, so my little brother ruined my birthday. But yeah, going back to him, because I was eight when he was when I was about um, twelve, thirteen, something like that. I started looking after him quite a bit. Uh, sort of during the holidays both the parents were working so I was it was my responsibility to look after him for quite a bit which was unfortunate but you know it's, I didn't really have a choice so I just did it and I used to spend a lot of time watching telly and I'd end up watching his programmes so I ended up watching, I just fell in love with some of, some of the stuff that I was way too old to be watching, like the Musker Hounds and what other ones, Fraggle Rock. See, Fraggle Rock was, that was like the middle 80s, I think, and the Muppet Babies. I think that was even like late 80s, early 90s. So I've got no excuse for watching that stuff, but I did. But there was a time, I mentioned this the other day, we used to have children's television on a Saturday morning. But it was, it was on all the way through the 80s pretty much all the way through the 90s as well and all the way through the most of the 2000s as well then cooking sort of appeared and cooking shows and stuff like that but there was a period in the early 90s 90 let's say 91 92 93 and a f there used to be TV or it used to be funny you know it wasn't although it it was a kids program it was adults that were hosting it so they were being they were kind of telling adult jokes but that were kind of were going over the heads of the kids as well as making the kids laugh as well. So it was funny for adults and kids. And some of the hosts, like Anton Deck, uh, oh, there's loads of different ones, but I used to watch that because I used to work 
all week. And I worked hard. You know, I did... Sometimes I'd do it, you know, long hours, do overtime during the week. Um, sometimes I'd work Saturday mornings. But when I didn't work Saturday morning, that was my time. I'd get up. I'd... Yeah, I miss that. I do, I'd... I do feel quite nostalgic for it because even though my lifestyle wasn't uh, ideal in some ways, the it was so nice to sort of wake up, not have to go to work, and I get some breakfast and I just lay in bed or lay up in bed and watch in telly, and I'd watch the. Um, the kids programs and it'd be like the Muppet Babies I loved the Muppet Babies I was in my 20s I loved it I still haven't seen it for a long time and then it'd be like music acts you know like and just silly sketches and stuff on these kids programs it was just funny and then the afternoon came and it was sport so I never watched that um, I used to watch it when I was a kid because there used to be wrestling and we also used to have boxing on so although there was only three channels to choose from there was um I think every Saturday through a period of time they used to be wrestling so we used to have these big wrestlers uh, one of the most or the two most famous wrestlers in England ever you know during that period um, was Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks and they were both absolutely huge I mean, they passed away now, but they were they were huge. I mean, huge, absolutely huge, and they were loved. They were, even though Big Daddy was the goody, Giant Haystacks was the baddie, but Giant Haystacks was still loved. Like in the nation, you know, people still loved him, even though he was the baddie. He was still, I don't know how to explain it, but they were both, they were both really, really famous. And millions and millions of people watched the wrestling, especially when them two fought each other. You know, they came together, they clashed and had a, a wrestling match and any television show today in you know this day and age any television show would give anything to get that audience to get that amount of people to watch their television show I say in this country because obviously practically every other country in the world is a lot bigger than this so the audiences would be a lot higher but here it might sound like I'm exaggerating but there was over 7 billion people watching that match seriously people actually reproduced so that their babies could watch the match. People, <laughs> I don't know what am I talking about? But it was very popular, and uh, also boxing. You used to have boxing on on the in the afternoon as well. So that was good, but it wasn't usually. 
it wasn't like world titles or anything. It was more domestic kind of boxing. I don't mean in the kitchen. I mean um, uh, probably like local, not local, but English titles and stuff like that. Um, but it was good because I'd love it to be back on to see the talent that's out there the, t the talented boxers just to see um, the ones that are maybe just starting out or the ones that I sort of don't really get to see on the big shows Big Show. That was he was one of my favourite wrestlers in America. Big Show. Oh, he was about nine foot tall and about nine foot wide. Huge man. And there was always something about that, wasn't it, with the wrestlers, like the really big. Because they couldn't really do anything. You know, they didn't. Not not because they they could, but they didn't. They were never going to be um, as acrobatic as the uh, human-sized ones. Just from physicality, is not many people as seven foot tall can do. the same thing as someone that's I don't know if I'm making sense here because that doesn't make sense because some of the top heavyweights are sort of six seven six nine and they're definitely hugely athletic in a sense but maybe not doing somersaults and jumping off the tops of ropes and stuff I mean, let's face it, if the Big Show, I imagine if he ever stood on the top of a rope in the ring, the wrestling ring, the whole stadium would collapse. So, yeah, I don't think he'd be able to do that. But I love the Big Show because he was just so huge. The Undertaker as well, I used to like him. The Rock, I used to love The Rock. See, I, I got into American wrestling in the late 90s. And I'll tell you why. It might have been earlier than that, but I think it was the late 90s. Because... I think it was. Yeah. It's just that they started to show it on telly. And they um, I don't know if it was Channel 4 or whatever channel it was but they actually show a live broadcast of an event like a big huge uh, wrestling event in America that was when it used to be called WWE no WWE World Wrestling WWF World Wrestling Federation and but of course the the world world the, the world wild world wildlife fund WWF sued the WWF the World Wrestling Federation saying that we don't want you using the, the term WWF anymore because you know Obviously, you're going to get uh, confused between an organisation that's out to protect wildlife and a bunch of sweaty men wrestling. It's, it's, it's such a similar... I mean, it's ridiculous. WWF wrestling. They had the word wrestling afterward. So it, do people think it's a World Wildlife Fund wrestling? 
oh my god they've got the they've got the giraffes wrestling each other uh, they get tangled up wouldn't they with them big long necks it's just how are they going to stand on the top of the ropes it's just it's silly isn't it or do they think that people are going to tune into world world wildlife fund expecting to see the rock and triple h cuddling no no I think that's one of the things of using WWF or you know just use the words World Wrestling Federation World Wildlife Fund that way we know where we are because CBT Cognitive Behavioural Therapy if you google that or put in CBT you get a different variations of what it stands for I'm not going to give you some of those I might have done in the past but uh, one is um training I think for motorbike like for moped training or motorbike um training you know you know when you buy a motorbike and to train to drive it or ride it something like that so that's one of the uh things for the CBT Lover is it basically comes it's C and B T Ch is so uh, yeah so it's a different thing so but yeah I get a little bit confused sometimes because when I was at university uh, studying counselling there's a lot of abbreviated terms and I just it's almost like I'm not learning I'm not learning what I need to learn if I keep using CB if I keep you know abbreviating things I almost feel like I need to say the whole of the words otherwise I'm not really not learning properly that's just a personal thing I suppose it's personal to me so mm. oh I needed the big yawn then oh that would be wrong so I held it back held it back I'm thinking, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking of doing a whisper version of this. Let me bore you to sleep. And I thought, should I do a, like a different podcast where I do a whisper, let me bore you to sleep, whisper. But then I thought, perhaps... Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I could do the occasional recording. Yeah, do the occasional recording and just have it as a whisper. I'm not sure. We'll see. Because I know that if I do a whisper recording as part of these podcasts, uh, then people will listen to them. Some, you know, maybe not everyone would want to listen, but but if I did a whole new podcast, it's like starting from scratch, you know, so, I don't know, I don't know. (sighs) It's just uh, my, when I whisper, apart from being... 
personally, I find it a bit more intimate. And I think my brain is a little bit different. If that makes any sense. Almost. I think differently when I'm whispering to the way I do when I'm talking. Even though I know I'm talking very softly. But. So I guess my brain, my brain, would probably, the way I'm thinking would be different now to the way it would be if I was shouting. Perhaps I should make a shouting podcast. I don't want to do that because I don't like what shouting does to my voice. Sometimes I go out and I'm with a friend or walking down a, the road where there's lots of traffic and I end up like shouting so that he can hear me and he's shouting so I can hear him over the traffic and I just, I find my voice just get a little, gets a little bit sore so I don't really, I don't enjoy the process. I'm going to go now thank you very much for listening remember if you like what I do leave a video review remember to be kind to yourself because you do you do deserve to be happy lots of love bye